This lesson is all about arithmetic sequences. So to start off, um, this is an example of an arithmetic sequence, 12, 22, 32, 42. And what makes it arithmetic is the fact that the terms have what's called a common difference. So if I look at how do I turn a 12 into a 22, well, I have to add 10 and I have to add the exact same 10 to turn a 22 into a 32, and then a 32 into a 42, I have to add 10. This number here is called the common difference, and it is what all arithmetic sequences have in common. So if I want to verify that a sequence is arithmetic, what I have to look for is that common difference. It's always the same number every single time. Okay, that's what makes it arithmetic. And this is the common difference, not a common ratio, Geometric sequences have common ratios. Arithmetic ones have common differences. All right, and with, our, with these sequences, um, I can do many things. I can first write a recursive rule for it, just like I do for the geometric ones. I have to have my start with value, which is 12, and then I have to figure out what procedure I have to do to get the, second, uh, the next term. So a sub n plus one is equal to the previous term, a sub n, and in this case, just a plus 10. So the only difference with these recursive rules is that I just have to change that multiply from the geometric to a plus in an arithmetic one. Now, what's interesting about arithmetic sequences is writing the apparent formula for them. And I'm gonna show you a different way of thinking of this sequence that will help you see how to write the apparent formula for an arithmetic sequence. So we're gonna start off by rewriting each of these terms so a sub 1 is 12, a sub 2 is 22, a sub 3 is 32, a sub 4 is 42, right? We know those numbers, but I want to think about where 12, or actually where 22 comes from. And 22 comes from me taking the previous term, uh, 12, and adding 10 to it. And then 32 comes from 12, and then I have to add 10 twice to get there. And 42 is 12 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. Well, what if I asked you for a sub 10? Are you going to write out 10 like that many times, like plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10? Heck no, that's too much. So what I want to do is I want to think about how can I rewrite this 10 plus 10 plus 10? And I need to think about what repeated addition is. Well, if I repeatedly add the same number over and over again, it's the same thing as a multiplication. So if I look at this, this is really 12 plus 10 times 3. And then I go back and I think, well, real, this is really 12 plus 10 times 2. And this is really 12 plus 10 times 1. And this first one is really 12 plus 10 times 0. So if I want to figure out what a sub 10 is, I can write all this stuff out if I had the time, but I don't. So I'm going to rewrite it as 12 plus 10 times something. And then I'm just going to follow the pattern. So the first term had a 0. The first term, or second term, had a 1. The third term had a 2. And the fourth term had a 3. So what's happening with these numbers here is that it's really this subscript number, the little stage number, minus 1. So what goes here is a 9, because that's a 10, so I have to take 1 away. And I get 12 plus 10 times 9. And if I want to go to like some really huge number, like 5,432, I can write all those 10s out. I don't have the time. So I'm going to say 12 plus 10 times, well, what number? Well, it has to be one less than this. So it's 5,431. Now, to write the apparent formula, all I need to do is change this into an n. So I have a sub n equals, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. It starts with a 12 plus a 10. And then what do I do to the stage number, or the index here, to get five, this number here? Well, subtract 1. So I'm just going to subtract 1 from there. And this is how I write apparent formulas. Now, if you think about an arithmetic sequence, they all work this way. They have some number they start with, and they have some number they add over and over again. And the only thing that changes is this number and that number, but this is going to stay the same every single time. So if I want to come up with a formula to write the apparent formula for any arithmetic sequence, I just have to translate this into the, the variables. So I know that 12, in this case, is a sub 1. So I know that a sub n is going to equal to the first term, a sub 1, plus this 10. Then I need to think about, what is that 10 to the problem? Well, the 10 was the common difference. So I'm going to pick a letter for common difference. I'm going to pick d for difference. So then I put d there. And then what goes in parentheses? 
the stage number minus one. So this thing here is the formula that you would use to write the apparent formula for any arithmetic sequence. First term plus the difference times the stage number minus one. So let's see this with a couple of other sequences. So let's look at, for example, 55, 48, 41, 34, 27, dot, dot, dot. First, let me verify that it's arithmetic. So to go from 55 to 48, I have to subtract 7, subtract 7, subtract 7, subtract 7. So this is arithmetic. Now, if one of these numbers is off, like if I made a typo or something, and it ends up being like minus six, then it's not arithmetic and this does not work. These numbers all have to be the same. And since they are, this is our common difference. Our common difference in this example is gonna be negative seven. And the sign makes a difference because if your common difference is positive, your sequence values go up, but these obviously go down, so I have to have a negative common difference. So if I'm gonna write the formula for it, it's a sub n equals first term, 55, plus, and then common difference, negative seven, and then um, n minus one. And this will give me that sequence if I substitute n for one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now I can also write it like this. I can write 55 minus seven times n minus one, because we know that the definition of subtraction is adding the opposite, so I can combine those two signs into just get this sequence here. Um, let me do another one. This time let's do, look at um, a fraction, just to see that you can do this with fractions too. So if I have the sequence negative one-fourth, negative one-half, negative three-fourths, negative one, dot, 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 I can see going from negative one-fourth to negative one-half, I am subtracting off a fourth, and then I'm subtracting off another fourth, and then I am subtracting off another fourth. So I know it's arithmetic. The common difference is negative one-fourth, and so if I want to write the apparent formula, it's start with the first term, which is negative one-fourth. I'm going to add the common difference, negative one-fourth, and I'm going to subtract, or I'm going to multiply it by n minus one. So that's the apparent formula for this one. Now this is not the only way to write an apparent formula. There are many ways to write an apparent formula, and I'm going to show you one other way. And this is how I think of it, personally. Whenever I write these rules, this is how I think of them. And I'm going to go back to the very first one. Twelve. 22, 32, 42, 52, dot, dot, dot. Now, I know this thing has the repeated addition. And I know the shorthand way of writing repeated addition is to multiply. So I know that the apparent formula has to have some 10 times an n. So 10n. I know 10n is part of it, or 10 times n is part of it. But the thing is, that doesn't work. If I think about 10n, 10n by itself generates a 10, 20, and then 30. But if I look at these numbers and I compare them, I see that these numbers are all, two, are all short by two. So if I just take this rule and I add two to it, I can get the sequences to match up. So I can always take this common difference and, and take it and multiply it by the n and then just figure out what I have to add and subtract to make it work. Now, this rule is exactly the same as the other rule, but just not simplified. If I remember what the other rule was, the other rule was I started with 12, and I did 10 times n minus 1. Well, if I follow the order of operations and I simplify this thing to get rid of the parentheses, I multiply 10 times n, and I get 10n, and then 10 times negative 1, which is minus 10 plus 12. And if I combine the terms that I can, I can combine a 12 and a negative 10, and what I get is 10n plus 2. So they are the same, it's just this one here hasn't been simplified down. And this one uses the patterns uh, in all arithmetic sequences. And this one, I just kind of have to like try to figure out how it's working.